is going to have lots of example sentences and we're going to see a lot of example uh, kind of expressions that we need to use in order to make today's grammar. So let's take a look. This is today's flow. We're going to first look at what is an adverb clause. What is an adverb clause? So that's today's key grammar point. What is an adverb clause? We're also going to talk about、uh, subordinating conjunctions, another key grammar point for today. Point two, types of adverb clause. So this is going to be、uh, your big practice point for today. And then finally, we're going to talk about reduced adverb clauses, how to make the short version. So, this is a lot to cover. <laughs> so,、uh, we're going to continue、uh, pretty quickly, or we'll, we'll go very smoothly through today's topics, I hope. So,、uh, throughout today's lesson, oh, cool hair, throughout today's lesson, Please send me your example sentences. I will try to check them in real time. Okay. Hi, YouTube. I see lots of you are there on YouTube now. Welcome, everybody. Juan, Kanwalji,、uh, Iman. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Okay. Let's begin now that everybody is here. Fantastic. Okay. So let's first begin by looking at、uh, just a definition. What is today's grammar point? What is an adverb clause? You might also see、uh, adverbial clause as well.、Uh, these have people write、uh, two different names for this grammar point sometimes. Okay, so what is an adverb clause? An adverb clause is a group of words that is used like an adverb. A group of words that is used like an adverb. What is an adverb? An adverb is a word like quickly. Or slowly, for example. It tells us how we do something, like the manner in which we do something, or maybe like the reason. So, adverbs give us like more information, more detail about uh, uh, like a verb. They tell us、uh, some extra information. Adverb clauses have a subject and a verb. Subject and a verb. So, we need both of those parts. Then, Key point for today's lesson and a key vocabulary, key vocabulary word for today's, for today's lesson. Adverb clauses, they begin with a subordinating conjunction. A subordinating conjunction. This is a key word, so let's talk about it for today's lesson. What is a subordinating conjunction? But first, what's a conjunction? Maybe you remember a conjunction. Is a connecting word. So, for example, we have words like and, or, but. Those words are conjunctions. We use those little words to connect our ideas together in sentences, right? So, main idea and main idea, maybe. We connect with conjunctions. Those are connecting words. So, a subordinating conjunction is a type of conjunction. It's a type. Of connecting word. So, what's the difference between a subordinating conjunction and a regular conjunction? A subordinating conjunction connects a dependent or a subordinate clause to an independent clause. So, what does that mean? That sounds like a big word, right? So,、uh, a subordinating clause, subordinating, you can think of this as a dependent clause, is part of the sentence. That needs some other part of the sentence in order to make sense. So, a subordinating clause cannot be by itself, it needs other information. So, we connect a subordinate clause. I'll show you some examples in a moment. We connect a subordinate clause to a, an independent clause with a subordinating conjunction. So, you can think of these words, these expressions. Like words that connect our kind of、uh, smaller ideas or our dependent ideas to our main ideas. These are called subordinating conjunctions. They are very important for today's lesson and for this grammar point. Okay, so let's look at types of subordinating conjunctions, these types of connecting words. Okay. Yeah, lots of somebody says, a counter tenor says, Conjunction Junction is a schoolhouse rock song. Yeah, Conjunction Junction、uh, is a song, a grammar song, all about conjunctions. Here, I'll bump up the volume. Some people are commenting. It's a little quiet. Okay, 
So I have here six different types or six different categories of subordinating conjunction. So that means each category is used to connect our subordinating clause or subordinate clause, sorry, to our independent clause and it, it gives us a, a different type of information. So when we want to express a place, we can use these subordinating conjunctions, where, everywhere, anywhere, wherever. So probably you know some of these words, yeah? Today we're going to practice using these to connect to other words or to other expressions. When we use a uh, time subordinating conjunction, there's a big list of words we use. These are uh, very, very common use or very, very common conjunctions we use to connect expressions. So once or since, when or while, whenever, so you see wherever is here for place, whenever for time, until, after, before, by the time. So this is time, time related expressions. Contrast, so contrast, that means when we use these subordinating conjunctions, we are expressing like the opposite of something, or we want to show a, a key difference between uh, two conditions, maybe. So the conjunctions for this category are though, while, although, even though, and whereas, whereas. Whereas is maybe a little more formal. Some of you might know whereas. Okay, this group, we have condition, condition. So when we want to express a condition, we use these subordinating conjunctions. We've practiced this a lot on this channel, especially if and like only if. So if I go to the park later, for example, is a condition. We're expressing a condition with these subordinating conjunctions. So we can use if, only if, unless, in case, even if. We use these to express conditions. The next category is reason, reason. So we use these to express a reason for something. Because, since, now that, and as are in this group. And the last group for today is comparison. So sometimes we use these expressions to make comparisons between two things. We use than, like uh, he is taller than me. So than, that's that use of than to make a comparison. And as, something, something, as. Like she likes rock music as much as she likes pop music. So that's the as, as pattern. So this forms, this is the base, this is the foundation for today's lesson, these categories. You don't have to remember all of the words right now, but this is important for your studies to make sure you are matching your subordinating conjunction to the type of information you want to express. We're going to use this in part two for today's lesson. Okay, so Let's take a quick break, and don't worry, I'll show you a picture of this so you can take a picture uh, for your studies too. So this is part one for today's lesson on adverb clauses. I'll put that down here. Okay, so I'm looking for your questions. I see lots of people still saying hello. Welcome everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, I don't see any questions on Facebook either. Hello to everybody saying hi on Facebook. Welcome, welcome. Okay. Quickly then, we'll take one short break. Uh, if you missed it earlier, I showed you, as always, we have free things for you from the link below the video if you are watching on YouTube or above the video if you are watching on Facebook. Um, here, I'll show you this one. Uh, so today's lesson is about adverb clauses. It's a, it's a grammar point and especially useful in writing as we'll talk about later. So that means you can use today's grammar point with every topic. So it's really, really helpful to understand uh, how to use it. Here are a couple of topics that most people like. <laughs> so uh, food, this says dining, but it's really about food. And this says singing, but it's about music. On the back of these, you can find expressions. 
So let's see, I can't see backwards. <laughs> so here we go. Compliments on the back of this food one. So you can use today's grammar point to make uh, expressions deeper. So instead of just saying like a simple main statement, you can use, you can put today's grammar point together with some of the types of expressions on these to make deeper expressions. So check out a topic you are interested in, pick up a few expressions and see if you can use today's grammar point. There are so many here, <laughs> I won't show all of them, but check the link below the video on YouTube or above the video on Facebook uh, to choose the ones that you like. You need an account, it is totally free to make, you, you need your name and your email address and then you can download everything. All right, let's continue on. If you are just joining today, this week our topic uh, is adverb clauses and how to reduce them. I just covered part one of today's lesson. Uh, the goal for this week's lesson is to give you some tips to improve your writing. I decided to make September about writing improvement, so this is the first lesson for that. Okay. I'll show you today's lesson boards again because I know there's a lot of information, yeah? But I'm, okay, we just talked about this. What is an adverb clause? Now, we're going to talk about types of adverb clause. In this part, in part two, we're going to use the same category. So you can see right here, this column says type. We're going to use the same categories I talked about in part one to make our example sentences. So let's go. <laughs> okay. Also, if you have not, please make sure to like and share this lesson so that other people can find it. I hope lots of people uh, can benefit from today's lesson. Okay, so let's move to part two. Types of adverb clause. Types of adverb clause. So, as I said, here, this part, type, this is the same group, the same uh, list of categories I showed you in part one of today's lesson. We have place, time, contrast, reason, condition, and comparison. So these are the same. Here we have question. So that means what kind of question or what question do we want to answer with our clause? This will become more clear in just a moment. So. I have an example sentence for each type so that you can see what's happening in the sentence and so we can break down the independent clause and the subordinate clause that I talked about at the beginning of the lesson. I'm going to try to speak very slowly because it's a lot of information. So let's begin with the first example. The first example is a place type adverb clause. So our adverb clause gives us information about where something happened or happens. Let's look at the example sentence here. Everywhere I go, I see advertisements. Everywhere I go, I see advertisements. Okay, here my adverb clause is everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. We learned in part one, we begin our adverb clause with a subordinating conjunction. In this sentence, everywhere is the subordinating conjunction. So it answers this question, where? Where? Everywhere. So everywhere I go, I see advertisements. So what's the relationship between this and this? Everywhere I go is the subordinate clause. That means it's the dependent clause. If we see a sentence like this, if we see, oh, this is hard. If we see just, oh, it's really hard to do. If we see just everywhere I go, it doesn't make sense. We need some extra information to finish the sentence. I see advertisements is an independent clause. It needs no information, no extra information. So we connect the two like this. So subordinate clause, uh, independent clause. Also, a writing tip for everybody today. This comma right here, you will see uh, in many sentences in the rest of today's lesson. You can place your adverb clause at the beginning of the sentence, like here, or you can place it at the end of the sentence. So for example, I see advertisements everywhere I go. If your subordinate clause is at the beginning of the sentence, use a comma at the end. 
If your subordinate clause is at the end of your sentence, you do not need to use a comma, or rather, don't use a comma, don't use a comma there. So please use a comma at the end of your subordinate clause if it's at the beginning of the sentence. Okay, we'll review this throughout the lesson. Phew. Okay, let's go to the second one. So let's look at the second type of adverb clause, time, time. So a time type answers the question, when? When did something happen? So let's look at the example. Time, first, where is my subordinating conjunction? Right here by the time, by the time. So I introduced this in part one of today's lesson, by the time. By the time answers when. So by the time I arrived at the office, comma, because this is at the beginning of my sentence, the meeting had ended. The meeting had ended. So I'm expressing two past actions, one after another, that's why I'm using this past perfect tense here. The meeting had ended. This action happened first. This action happened second. <clears throat> I've talked about this uh, in past episodes before, so I won't go in depth into this one. Okay, some examples are coming in. Great. Uh, Millie on Facebook says, Everywhere I go, I see a lot of cars. Good. Make sure to use the plural. Everywhere I go, I see a lot of cars. Uh, Yolanda says, everywhere you go, I would like to go. <laughs> That's cute. Okay, great job. All right, let's go to uh, the next one. This one uh, is contrast, contrast. So contrast, by contrast, I mean, we're li it's like we're asking, what's the opposite? What's the opposite of this thing? Let's look at our example. Even though we finished work on time, we were late getting to the theater. So getting to is a different way, a casual way to say arrived. We were late arriving to the theater. We were late getting to the theater. So subordinating conjunction, even though, even though. So even though we finished work on time. This is like saying although, or we could say though. So even though sounds a little more casual, though tends to sound a little more formal. So it is like despite here, mm, like despite finishing work on time. All of those are correct. Just slightly different nuances. So even though we finished work on time, comma, we were late getting to the theater. Okay. A question came in. Hamad Aljan on Facebook. I hope I said your name right. Sorry. Can I say by the time I arrived at the office, the meeting was ended? We can't use ended there. You could say by the time I arrived at the office, the meeting was over. So over in that case uh, is an adjective. So meaning something that is finished. Mm. Uh, but you cannot say was ended. You can say the meeting had ended. That's correct. Uh, okay, I don't see other questions yet. Uh, Zayad has a great example uh, that uses this here. Uh, in spite of the heavy traffic, I arrived on time. So great example, that was perfect. So contrast here, I have opposite. It's answering, it's saying, what's the opposite? So it's like saying um, there was this other condition or this other situation. So this happened, but even though, or in spite of, or despite that, this other thing happened. So we're showing contrast there. Okay. Uh, all right, let's continue because there's a lot to cover. Still three more examples to cover. Reason, reason. So the reason type expresses why. For example, I can't pay for lunch because I forgot my wallet. I can't pay for lunch because I forgot my wallet. So in this one, the subordinating clause is, or sorry, the subordinate clause is at the end of the sentence, yeah? Here is my subordinating conjunction, because, because, this is my connecting word. So, because I forgot my wallet, this is my subordinate clause, here's my main clause, or independent clause. I can't pay for lunch, I can't pay for lunch. Why? Because I forgot my wallet. Again, no comma here, no comma here, because <laughs> the subordinate clause is at the end of the sentence, okay. On to condition, condition. I talked about this at the beginning of the lesson. In what condition? So again, we use if or only if or unless in these patterns. For example, 
if I don't pass this test, I'm going to lose my scholarship. If I don't pass this test, I'm going to lose my scholarship. So, if, if is my subordinating conjunction here. This introduces my uh, dependent clause. Comma, if I don't pass this test, comma, I'm going to lose my scholarship. Okay? So we're expressing a condition with this. Um, Jamal on Facebook says, does even though has the same meaning of even if? Uh, no. Even if uh, expresses, uh, so like to give an example, like even if I pass the test, I don't know if I'll get accepted to the university. So that means uh, in, the, in the condition that something is true, I still don't know something else. Even though we tend to use like in past tense, it's like despite a condition, uh, something else. So no, they are not the same. Whew, good examples are coming. Cindy SMS, a member, hi there, says, I can't learn everything because I arrived late. Oh no, uh, and make sure no comma, Cindy SMS, uh, no comma after that because your subordinate clause is at the end of the sentence. Yeah, I can't learn everything, no comma, because I arrived late. All right. Um, Okay, onward. Uh, comparison, the last one. Time's going quick, so I need to move along. Comparison. How is A like B? How is A like B? So we want to compare two things. For example, she likes Italian food as much as she likes Mexican food. She likes Italian food as much as she likes Mexican food. So here, this right here, as, as. We use this pattern right here, this as much as, or like as many as, and so on. This is their subordinating conjunction, our connecting expression for comparison words. Mm. So these are all examples of the type of adverb clause. So when you practice, you can put, I'll show you again, put these, this group, these things together with your example sentences. So think of the question you want to answer and choose the subordinating conjunction accordingly. Also, a note here, you may see slightly different categories for types of adverb clauses uh, in your textbooks or online. So uh, depending on the resource you use, you might see slightly different categories or slightly different groups, but this is a good guide, I think. Okay. So this is part two for today's lesson, the types uh, and a comma, a key comma point. All right, let's take one more short break and then we'll go to the last part, reducing adverb clauses. I see some of your questions are coming in. Uh, even though I didn't study hard, Millie, I passed uh, the next level maybe, mm, even though I didn't study hard, okay. Um, Ava says, excuse me, are in spite, in spite and even though, the same. Uh, in spite of something, something, like in spite of, um, let's see, in spite of a hard day, I cooked dinner at home, or even though I had a hard day, I cooked dinner at home. Yes, they communicate the same idea, but we need to make some changes to the grammar. So I just said, in spite of a hard day, or in spite of feeling tired, something like that, versus a uh, even though I had a hard day. We need to make some small changes to the grammar, uh, but they communicate the same idea. Okay, onward. <laughs> Let's go to the last part of today's lesson. Also quickly, if you didn't check before, free stuff for you <laughs> from the link below the video uh, if you're watching on YouTube or above the video on Facebook, woohoo. Okay, continuing. Uh, I'll show you today's lesson boards again so that you can take a screenshot if you would like to keep this for your studies. So we practiced uh, or we learned adverb clauses, what are they, and subordinating conjunctions. Then we learned types of adverb clause here. Now we're going to talk about reduced adverb clauses. So this part I really hope uh, is helpful for your writing, how to like makes your writing more efficient. Okay, let's go. Also, if you have not, please make sure to like and share this video so other people can find today's lesson. So that would be super cool. All right, I don't see questions. So let's go, <laughs> let's go, let's go. So reduced adverb clauses. Reduced means shorter. We make them shorter so they're more efficient. 
A reduced adverb clause is a short form of a basic adverb clause. So I just introduced uh, a few examples of just regular adverb clauses. Yeah. Reduced forms are a little more efficient. So we don't use as many words to make a reduced adverb clause. A couple very important points about this. Only the subordinate clause changes. There is no change to the independent clause. So remember, subordinate clause is that dependent clause, the one that uses the connecting word, the conjunction, yeah? So please don't change your independent clause when you make a reduced adverb clause. Then this type of um, change, a reduced adverb clause, is a little more common in writing, especially formal writing. So if you're writing a formal letter or a formal paper or something, it's perhaps more common and more efficient to use a reduced adverb clause. It's less common in speech, although we do use them uh, a lot. Like I know I use reduced adverb clauses in my speech for sure. Um, but you might see them more commonly in writing. So, I have a general rule, a general rule. There are some kinds of uh, special cases depending on the type of adverb clause, but here is a general guide that you can use. It is subject plus be. So that means the be verb, so was or were, for example. Subject, the subject, and the verb be can be omitted. That means we can remove it if the subject in the subordinating and the independent clause are the same. What does this mean? Let's look at an example, yeah? It's kind of confusing. So let's look at an example here. While I was listening to music, I cooked. While I was listening to music, I cooked. So. I said subject and be can be omitted, okay? If the, sub if the subject in the subordinating, right here, and independent, right here, clause are the same. So what does that mean? The subject in this clause is I. The subject in this clause is I, yeah? So that means we can remove this guy right here and this be verb. These two can go away to make while listening to music. I cooked. That's what this means. So if this subject and this subject match, you can remove the subject and be. And this is a grammatical sentence. It's a grammatically correct sentence. Okay. I don't see questions. <laughs> Let's continue. So you can send me your examples of this. I will try to check live. There's a little bit of time. Let's go to this one. I wanted to include this one because, <laughs> because uh, topics or because examples are very, very common. So when you use because, you might see a pattern like this. We can omit because the subject and your auxiliary verb, like your helping verb, and you replace it with having. This is I know it seems like a very strange change, but this is very, very common. So let's look at an example of this, and you can send me your examples too. I will try to check live. So, because Steve had forgotten his wallet, he asked Sarah to pay for lunch. Because Steve had forgotten his wallet, he asked Sarah to pay for lunch. So here is my because, right? So I said we can use this rule with because. Again, this reduction is only possible if this subject and this subject are the same. So in this case, Steve is the same as he. This is the same person. So we can use this reduction rule. So to do this, we remove because Steve, my subject, and my helping verb, in this case, had, is my helping verb. We replace it with having. Having forgotten his wallet. Then you'll notice I have Steve here. Steve asked Sarah to pay for lunch. 
In this case, I use Steve here because there's no more Steve in this subordinate clause. We need to make it clear in this part of the sentence who is the subject. Steve asked Sarah to pay for lunch. So this is a very, very common reduction that you will see in writing and you'll also hear in speech. So I wanted to make sure to talk about this one today. Uh, Cheo Ka Kanga on YouTube says, you always remove uh, at least one time the subject. Yeah, so when you use the reduced form, so I've, I've shown you this general one that you can use in many different uh, types of adverb clause. Yes, you remove your subject and your be verb only in the subordinate clause. So remember, subject does not change here, doesn't change here. The only reason I changed this example sentence is because I removed the subject here to make my sentence more efficient and I need to express clearly who he is in this situation. If I said, having forgotten his wallet, he asked Sarah to pay for lunch, we might be like, who is he? So we use the name Steve in this case. Uh, Bhavna says, having made a mistake, I asked him for a date. <laughs> oh, really? That's, okay, what's going on there? Interesting, interesting. Okay. Um, some others. Uh, Agung says, why do we have to reduce this sentence? Yeah, you don't. You don't have to reduce it, actually. Uh, it's just a way to make your sentence more efficient. We don't need to use so many words. And this is important to study because other people will use this grammar with you. So... It's good to know this, even if you don't want to use it yourself. Okay. Um, all right. I don't see any other questions. Zayad on Facebook says, Having succeeded with flying colors, I had a great party. Perfect, perfect. Very nice use of this one. Very nice use of this one. Okay. Uh, I think that's all. I don't see others. Cindy says, Can we change the phrase Steve asked? Ah, like you mean here, having forgotten his wallet, Steve ran out of the restaurant. <laughs> yes, you can. You can totally change that. So you can totally change that uh, that independent clause. That's fine. Uh, good. Okay, we'll finish there for today. I only have a few minutes left, so I'll end there. I will show you today's lesson boards one more time so you can take a picture and review this and study. So this is it. Today's topics, adverb clauses. So key points for today, subordinating conjunctions. Yeah, those little connecting words are types of adverb clause and how to make them shorter. So a few things I hope you take away from today's lesson. One is the comma rule I talked about that will make your writing more clear. So please make sure to use that comma after a subordinate clause at the beginning of a sentence. And also please keep in mind those uh, reduction rules, uh, the reduction guides I talked about too, that will make your writing more efficient. Uh, so I hope that this is helpful for you. Um, Andrea on YouTube says, can I reduce all types of adverb clauses? No, you cannot reduce all types of adverb clauses. I showed a guide uh, at the beginning of part three. So if your adverb clause has that subject and to be, some form of the verb to be, you can reduce that. That's a general rule. There are some other special rules too. Uh, I introduced one with because, but the answer is no. All right, I have to finish. Oh my gosh, so next week, uh, next week I'm going to do another lesson about writing improvement. Next lesson will be uh, September 9th, September 9th, uh, Wednesday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you don't know your local time, please Google it. <laughs> please use your Google skills. Uh, I'm going to talk about modifiers. What is a modifier? For example, almost, just, nearly, and only. I'm going to talk about these because many learners like confuse these and a lot of people, even native speakers, make mistakes with the placement of modifiers in sentences. Uh, if you want to review ahead, uh, that issue is called misplaced modifiers. So we're going to practice uh, using modifiers correctly. So I hope that you join me again next week uh, to practice more 
writing tips. So thank you so much for joining me again this week. Thank you very much for your awesome questions. That was fantastic. I really, really enjoyed your great questions and your awesome example sentences. So I will finish there for this week. Thank you very much also for liking and sharing the lesson. That is super, super cool. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. Uh, have a great weekend and I will see you again next time. Bye.